I'm Brian V, and this is Why We Work. Today, I have the great pleasure of speaking with Christina Flack. Christina is the president and CEO of Pretty Girl Makeup. Not only that, she is a celebrity makeup artist, she is a writer, blogger, mom, and entrepreneur. Today, I want to find out the process that she goes through in creating a new design. But also, I want to find out how Christina instructs her clients to look stylish and feel confident. Join me in my conversation today with Christina Flack. I'm Brian V, and this is Why We Work. Today, I have the great pleasure of speaking with Christina Flack. Good afternoon, young lady. Well, good afternoon, kind gentlemen. How are you? I am doing wonderfully well, and I do thank you for doing this. You are a gracious lady. I know that because oh, thank you, you for you just gave me cut two or take two. <laughs> so I truly appreciate that, Christina. I know that you are the CEO and founder of Pretty Girl Makeup. Yes, I am. <laughs> it's you. You have a wonderful way about you because I know that you know. If with all of us, we have a story. Can you give us an idea of what you're doing nowadays, if it's just in your company, or are you doing some other things as well? Okay, so th there's, um, so I run my company, I, you know, I create new products, and I run my business, and, and, and it's wonderful with For Pretty Girl Makeup. We're in the midst of bringing on, doing a new, developing a new hair care line, and a new skin care line that I'm very excited about. Uh, normally, if it's not the shut-in and the world isn't topsy-turvy, uh, my agent books me really fabulous jobs um, doing TV shows, um, working with you know, e-commerce. I work with different fashion designers. I work with different um, TV networks. I work with Fox quite often. I work with ESPN, Fox. I mean, every, you know, every network you can imagine, I work with. And um, I love it. I, it's it's a really great balance for me being a makeup artist and running my business because you, you know you as a makeup artist you're kind of like an actor you don't work every day you could work you know yeah. once two three times a week or five straight days or not work for a few weeks and then you're having a heart attack that you're not working so it's nice to have my company to be running as well so um, on days that I'm not on photo shoots I'm being a CEO. Christina, I would be amiss, I think, if I didn't mention Empress Connecting Us. And I, I yes. know she has a new single out, so she's pumping out the music. Uh, yes. Very talented lady herself, and you've worked with her on numerous occasions. For, um, for a few years, I've been her makeup artist. So I do all her hair and makeup for her uh, photo shoots for her albums. And it's she's one of my best friends, so it's an absolute joy to work with her because she's super fun and you know, lovely and sweet, and she's got the most gorgeous face ever. So it's always yeah. fun. She gives me a lot of creative um, freedom to mm -hmm. how I view her and, and, you know, the way I, you know, she'll tell me like kind of like the vibe that she's looking for, but then she allows me to kind of just do what I, she knows she'll always look beautiful. So she gives me a lot of artistic freedom, which I really love. Because oftentimes as a makeup artist, if I'm working with Gucci or Louis Vuitton, they're very specific. They'll send me, um, you know, a very detailed document of how they want the makeup to look. Um, and it's usually very minimal. They just want the mo model to have uh, flawless skin. And because the, the part with fashion is the fashion, not my makeup. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to be able to have fine, uh, you know, creative freedom to, to create something that, that I get she's, to do. Something. She's a classy lady. I, I, she I, is. She's wonderful. Christina, would you do me a favor and bring us back to what would have been your very first job? So this podcast is why we work. So I want to dive into all the things that you've done, you know, as much as we can uh, have time for, but okay. the idea of promoting work and showing other people, even though it's difficult, work is still good. What would have been your very first job, even as a teenager, having nothing to do with makeup? Oh, okay. My first like job job. Let's see. Yeah, lemonade stand. Whatever. I think I did lemonade stand. I um, pet sat. I would feed people's dogs. I would walk people's dogs. Um, 
what else did I do? I worked well, in a deli. One well, what summer. was the very first thing that you could remember that it was specific and we can put an age to? I, I think I was probably like 10 and I went to my neighbors and watered plants and fed the cat. That was my first job. Why did you do that? They asked me and yeah. I was so excited to earn some money and have that responsibility. And it was, it was kind of, it was a neat experience. So it wasn't family telling you, okay, Christine, to get out and go get some money. It was a neighbor no. asking you and you maybe yes. not even thinking that it was a possibility to, to make money out of it, but just doing a favor for a neighbor. Yes. Yes. That's what how it have, just started. What would have been the, the next job or something else you were able to make money in? I worked um, in a deli in my hometown one summer um, and that was fun, but really hard work. And it also made me realize that I wanted to have a job that I made a lot of money and, you know, not work, you know, cause you know, we're standing on your feet all day, tending to be, I think everyone should work in the food service industry mm -hmm. because it is such hard work mm -hmm. and you're dealing with so much stress and difficult people oftentimes. And it really teaches you, you know, how hard, you know, but you, it is important to get an education and to, you know, become successful. So you can, you know, I'm, I'm all about working hard, but I also like to be compensated for my hard work. Right. Not so. only that too, is the idea of working in those types of industries. It gives you a better appreciation for those people who you will, you know, you will go to a restaurant again oh, and rather sure. than being, you know, a not nice person to your wait staff, you can say, Oh, I was in that position before. And I remember how difficult it is. So, you know, how are you doing today? You know, you can have a different perspective by experiencing those same things. Oh, definitely. But I think I'm, I'm very sensitive to um, my husband uh, had some restaurants and I helped him with designing them. And, and, you know, every now and again, he needed help. I've always been very thoughtful and respectful of people. I, that was per, instilled in me quite early um, from my parents. My kids are saying bye. <laughs> my, uh, my family instilled in me from a very young age to always treat others the way you wanna be treated and to be respectful and kind. And it's just kind of in me to be that way. Uh, my mother's Canadian, as you are. Yes. Um, so, you know, Canadians are very nice. <laughs> hey, aren't we? Hey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, you know, I just, I was raised that way. It was just how, it's the same way I've raised my children to treat others the way you want to be retreated and leave the, you know, whatever situation you're in to leave it better than when you entered it. So it's just kind of how I am. You mentioned education. So as, as you were getting into high school, were you working as well? Or did, was that part of the deli? No, that um, I, I played uh, competitive tennis as a junior. Okay. And so that was kind of my job. I, you know, trained in the morning and after school. So that was kind of like my job. So were you thinking about college at all? Or did you take that path? Oh, of course. Oh, no, I did. I went to college. I, I went on a tennis scholarship. And um, what were you thinking in, in what you wanted to do after college? What Psychology or art okay. history or I really wasn't quite sure. I, um, I, I, I knew it was... I didn't think, I, I really didn't think I was going to be a makeup artist. I never thought I'd have an agent. I didn't think I'd be a CEO of a company. I, that, I, you know, that's that wasn't so part of the cards. No, I didn't even, I didn't even know what a CEO was. <laughs> and I didn't know that people could make money being a makeup artist. I had no idea. So it's, well, it's been an interesting uh, way. You know, I love my career and uh, it makes me happy and it, it, I've told my children this, like figure out what it is that you love doing, even if you weren't getting paid and then figure out how to get paid yeah. and then figure out where you want to be. Like I like traveling. I'm kind of a gypsy in that respect. I like, you know, meeting new people and going on photo shoots and being in different places. I, I, you know, I don't, I think it would be very hard for me to have a cubicle that I went to every day yeah, and it was the same. I like change. Um, I like change, but I, it's funny for some, I, I don't like change in some things, but I like change in my work all the time, but the consistency of doing what I do, if that makes any sense. No, it does. And that's why I like the idea of this podcast is to show how people start with one thing and they end up being something else. And so other people will not be discouraged when their life doesn't seem to be going the way they thought 
it was going to go. And for right. you, thinking psychology, getting into that for college, your path took a completely different turn. So after college or nearing the end of college, what were you thinking for a job wise or what was, what was your plan? Well, I was playing tennis, like, you know, on the circuit, um, not at the same level my husband played, who was, you know, number one in the world. <laughs> but um, I, you know, I started teaching tennis. Um, and so, you know, that was pretty lucrative. And it kind of, again, it was kind of like being like a makeup artist, because you're going to someone's house different every day it was I would go to people's homes. That was kind of my niche to people that had tennis court. And then I, you know, I started an import export business. I lived in Mexico and I started that. And then when I moved back to the States, um, you know, I, I was married and I had, I started having children and, and being a makeup artist, I, I'd always done people's makeup. Um, I started with my mom. My mom had brain cancer when I was a young girl and she was going out on a date with my father and I wanted her, she just, I could tell she was sad with how she looked, her skin and her, you know, she had lost her hair. And so I said, oh, mommy, let me, you know, let me do your makeup. And, and I did. And what was so satisfying to me was besides I was shocked that I could make transform her to look like herself, like how she normally looked, um, how she felt, she felt, she felt beautiful on the inside, which made her look even more beautiful on the outside. And I think that's part of my gift uh, being a makeup artist is that I make people feel comfortable and I make them feel happy and good. And, you know, part of that is knowing when to listen, uh, when to speak and when not to speak at all. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get a client that's traveled a lot and they don't want to talk. They just want quiet. Um, so I have to figure out rather quickly um, how, what the what this whatever client is going to make them happiest when they're in front of the camera so. when when how old were you when you first when you put the makeup on your mom when you felt that, oh my gosh i was uh -huh. young i must have been like 12 i mean i was pretty young i had no idea what i was doing and <laughs> you see videos of pe kids putting makeup on either their moms or their dads <laughs> yeah and but they've got you, like blue and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it actually worked out surprisingly, and so. Um, so that's where the seed would have started, right? You, the planting of the idea. So how long before that came into fruition? You did the import export business. You were at home having children, and then were you starting it around that same? Well, then time? I I had a friend who was an image consultant, and she thought that that would be a great job for me as well. She wanted me to take over her business. She was going into real estate and she thought- What does that consist of, image consulting? Oh, so it's like being a personal shopper, um, organizing people's closets to like how they're, you know, the, the clothes that everything goes together and that the mm -hmm. colors match. And so I, I did that for a bit. And then, and that was great being a mom, having the flexibility to have my children, but to have a career. And so that was kind of art. I've always had this artistic eye. I love making things beautiful, whether it be my home or my garden or people. I kind of like remodeling everything, <laughs> just making everything look like the best version of itself, whether it be a room or food or flowers. I really enjoy that. Christina, can you speak? You just mentioned it, but my dear wife, we've, we have two children and I know it's hard raising a husband, right? <laughs> raising children, taking care. Yes. But I know my dear wife has a, a, a niche, a desire to do something else as well. And she's starting to, she's starting to teach from our home, teach mm -hmm. English. Can you speak of that as you were having children, you already had a career of your own, then you were home, but then you're wanting to do something else. Do you, do you remember that, the process that you went through with that yeah, and I, the I, idea I mean, of just, really I getting it? Yeah, I, I was very blessed because I had a nanny at home. So my kids didn't really get affected by what I did. Mm -hmm. um, but I was a very, and I am a very uh, attentive mother. I make, sh you know, I I'm get them ready in the morning and make sure there's lunches. And mm -hmm. I want to, I want to be, I wanted to be a very present mother, but I also loved making money. And I loved having, you know, meeting new people and just having an outlet besides, you know, my children. And I think I'm a better mother because I've had those experiences. Uh, and I think it's also been really great for my children to see, you know, they, it's funny, my kids are older now. My daughter, Melania is 27, Rose is 25, Nikolai is 20, and Ben is 14. 
Um, and it, I think it's been really great for them to see my work ethic and um, how I treat people. Um, I do a lot of philanthropic work. My husband, Ken Flack, passed away. Uh, he was a professional tennis player. Um, he was number one in the world. I mentioned that earlier. Um, he was on the Davis Cup team, won Wimbledon. He had an amazing career. And he passed away uh, almost three years ago from, from sepsis, which is a uh, blood disease. It's an infection of the blood that attacks all your organs. So after he passed away, I wanted to honor him. Um, the Sepsis Alliance contacted me and asked if they could use uh, his likeness for you know, billboards and, and things on buses and trains. And I said, yes. And it's been really great way for me to help with my grieving process by having, um, you know, using his celebrity to, to raise awareness for sepsis because he, Ken and I had no idea what sepsis was when he got ill. And um, there at the sepsis.org website, your listeners can go to, and there's a, like a timetable and it says time. And T is for temperature. You can be either incredibly hot or incredibly cold. I is for infection in some form of your body. Um, it could be, a, you know, an infection in your tooth or what my husband had was bronchitis, which turned into pneumonia. And then M is for mental decline. It's hard to get them roused. They're kind of tired and lethargic. And E is for excruciating pain. They are in excruciating pain because you know how you say, oh, I think I'm dying? Because you are, your organs are shutting down and it's incredibly painful. Tanya Roberts, I don't know if you know who she is. She was an actress that just died last week of sepsis. She had a bladder infection and, um, and it turned septic and she passed away. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg has had it. There's been a lot of you know, people that have had sepsis uh, and survived. If you get a blood test and it shows that you're septic, they put you on an IV uh, antibiotic and, and you should survive. But there is definitely a timetable. And unfortunately, my husband's doctors didn't see him. They treated him over the phone. Um, and didn't see him. And so because of that negligence, you know, my husband passed away and it's been really hard for uh, me and my children because he was just an amazing, amazing man. And um, I miss him every day. Well, Christina, it's funny. I wasn't going to ask you about your husband directly because I know you've been on so many interviews, but then I thought to myself, well, if it comes up, I was going to ask about grieving. And I asked that because my mom just passed away in February, almost a year. And you oh, mentioned I'm your so mom. Sorry. Yeah, she died of cancer in February. So I went back to Canada and almost every episode <laughs> I mentioned my mom because it was the idea of why I started this because she was a hard worker. She usually had two, if not three jobs at a time. And even wow. on her, her deathbed, she was trying to get up out of her bed to go to work. So that's of course what, she was. That's you know, amazing. It, it just it was just it was amazing. And that's why I started this. And I find talking and mentioning it in my podcast almost every time, it's good for grieving. And and being just my experiences, I haven't had many people close to me pass away. So right. you know, grandparents, um, but they were a little bit further away, distant wise, uh, and, and some friends and acquaintances but can you speak of the idea of just general grievance for people who lose people because i think our natural inclination would be to to remain silent i mean maybe other people may not but just the idea of talking about it and getting that out there and and it doesn't have to be on a podcast it doesn't have to be out in public but i know by me speaking about my mom it's been very helpful oh that's great to hear so you know, I started, it was very interesting. I never expected, you know, being a makeup artist and a CEO, I, you know, I'm pretty behind the camera and, and then, you know, being married to who I was married, married to Ken Flack, you know, and he passed away and it just kind of made my life a little bit more public. And so when I would speak about the sepsis, you know, awareness, and then people started asking me about grieving, which I didn't expect to ever, I, I was on the hold one day on a serious radio on the doctor channel. And this woman was introducing, I heard her, I was on hold and she was saying, oh, we've got a very special guest. She's had this very tragic life and, you know, and then she introduces me and I was so shocked that she thought my life was tragic. And I'm like, wait, who, me? 
Um, I have had a lot of tragic things happen. My mother died when I, you know, she had cancer when I was young and she died when I was 20. My son, Bo, um, passed away 14 years ago on Christmas day. And then that was horrible. And then my husband passed away on March 12th of 2018. And so I've had, and my business partner, uh, passed away, uh, it's going to be a year and a half now. Um, and so I have had quite a bit of loss at, for my age. And, um, so I going back a bit. So when, you know, after he died, it was very hard for me to sleep. I, I really had to start being, I'm very disciplined, but I had to take it up to another level. Um, waking up every day and having my green juice and my vinegar and my water and, you know, exercising and going to yoga and meditating and praying and everything. And one day I was on a hike by myself in the Hills and I was having like this conversation. I could hear my husband speaking to me. And I don't know if you've had that instance with your mother, if you hear a voice in your head and you think it's her because it is. Um, so my husband was telling me how, terrible how how incredibly painful it is to watch me crying at night in bed and mm. so sad and it's he he was saying that you know it's so horrible to watch you like this because i can't comfort you the way i would normally if i was next to you yeah. and so i thought to myself my gosh how awful would that be to look down and not be able to comfort someone I wouldn't want my children or my husband sad if I passed. Um, and so I started thinking, you know, the best thing that I could do to honor my husband is to have a happy life and, you know, set a good example for my children, because if I'm not happy, they're not going to be happy. But I, um, I started an educational foundation for my son, Bo, and at the Northern Light School in Oakland, California. It's a private school for predominantly uh, minority children that are, they're all on scholarship, 90%. And it's such an extraordinary school. Michelle Williams is the headmistress and she, these kids, um, it's like from preschool to eighth grade. And then sh they get scholarships to go to private high schools and then they go on to college and get scholarships and graduate. I mean, it's just an extraordinary place. So I thought after my son Bo passed away, I started uh, the baby Bo fund there and then when uh ken was alive they have a golf tournament every year with vita blue and a bunch of athletes in the bay area where i live the 49ers the warriors the a's the giants the sharks all come in play in this golf tournament to raise money for the school and ken did that while he was alive um and then after he passed i started the ken flack educational fund and my uh, Bo's twin, Ben, my youngest son, mm -hmm. um, has been playing in this golf tournament for four years, raising money for his twin and now his, his dad's foundation. Um, and it's really extraordinary because my son last October uh, raised $35,500 in one day. Um, he had raised like $3,000, $5,000, $10,000, but last year it was $35,500. And I said to him, Ben, like, this is so amazing what you've done. And he's like, mom, I played golf today, like big deal. And I said, no, you didn't just play golf today. <laughs> you raised enough money for three children to go to school, mm -hmm. private school for a year. Mm -hmm. You know, that changes lives and families and it changes communities in the world. And so it makes me so proud to be raising, you know, money to help children with education in to honor my husband and my son, um, you know, and, and their memory. And so I feel like if you, you can grieve, everyone grieves how they want, when they want. But if you think about it, if you, I don't think anyone would want their loved one to be looking down and seeing us sad and crying all the time. I mean, believe me, I have moments, quite a few where I'm crying and I'm sad and I'm lonely and I miss my husband and my, I miss my baby. But if I can help others, it really does help with my grieving process. And it, it feels good to be helping other people, you know, and the same with the, with the raising awareness for sepsis. I don't want anyone to go through what I've gone through and my children and Ken's children. Um, 
of, of the loss of anyone because they were unaware of the signs of sepsis. So that's how I deal with the grieving. I yeah. think, you know, grieving, it doesn't mean that I don't miss him if I'm smiling and happy and able yeah. to have a conversation about him. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't mean at all. I mean, it, it, because people think like, oh, I'm going to wear black and be miserable the rest of my life. That's not honoring anyone. Yeah. That's just making the world not a positive, pleasant place. Yeah. So I, I also started a garden um, at a school in Mill Valley, California uh, called Ed McGuire School. My friend Lisa Zimmer is the principal at the time. They had this garden and it was kind of uh, beaten up. And so I raised uh, a ton of money with some a bunch of other people in the community for this outdoor classroom. And it's called uh, the Bo Friedman Outdoor Classroom. And um, these kids go out and they plant seeds and they grow vegetables and they pick fruit from the trees and there's chickens and nutrition is super important to me. Anyone that gets into my makeup chair has to, you know, hear my chats on, you know, green juice and, you know, eating well. And I, cause I do believe that if you start eating well at a young age, it's going to, you know, that's going to change your, how you eat the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. No, I think you're a great spokesman for the difficulties that we have, but also living it in a full way, not, as you said, wearing black and bringing down the rest of the world, because there's lots of tragedy. There's lots of tragedy that people go through all the time. And I'm glad you said it's okay to cry once in a while, because every once in a while, I think of my mom, especially, of especially, during, especially during Christmas. It's like, of oh, course. Oh, my mom's. So I don't want to shift gears in, in a crude or crass way. Or, no. but the idea of you and your work, how did you get into pretty girl makeup? How did that become a brand? So I was on holiday with my uh, husband and children in Hawaii and um, some friends, my girlfriends, and it, we, we were sitting by the pool at this beautiful resort. And my girlfriend, Claudia is German. She was a German model. And she said, honey, our kids were all swimming at the time. And you know how that is when you have kids and they're like swimming on their own and you can just kind of like look at a magazine and drink an iced tea while you're watching them. And she's like, we're being pretty girls right now. No one knows we're mommies for two seconds. And I started <laughs> laughing so hard. I thought that is the funniest thing I've ever heard. Um, yeah. yeah. I said, I said, what does that mean, pretty girl? She goes, you know, you're just being pretty. You're not. And I just thought it was, it was kind of funny. I thought that's a perfect name for a makeup brand, pretty girl, because it's not about, you know, obviously it's about being pretty on the outside, but being pretty on the inside and, and making people happy and being a good person. And so I went in and trademarked it, called my lawyer, and I started working with a chemist to formulate the, the texture and the colors and so by this point you were not working with makeup at all you just there's I know I was a makeup artist but not like I didn't have an agent or anything okay. I just kind of was doing weddings and you know if someone needed a photo shoot I did that I, I wasn't like what I do now yeah you know I didn't have a portfolio or anything at that time I, I mean I had a portfolio but not like what I have now I didn't wasn't doing celebrities or anything like that what is the process that you go from, say, maybe one of your first lip glosses or some of the other products that you have to the final product where someone can buy it off a shelf? How difficult is that process and, and what does that entail? It's so funny because I have this client, Tyler Florence, and he's a celebrity chef. And he asked me one day, oh, how's, how's your company going? And I said, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe how long everything takes mm -hmm. and how much money everything costs. And he said, you know, if anyone knew how much time, effort, and money everything costs, no one would do anything, Absolutely. right? Yeah. So it's ignorance is bliss, you know. Um, the the formulation with the chemist, you know, I wanted it to have natural oils, and I wanted it to be good for your skin as well as long lasting. So it took almost a year, and I would never have thought that in a million years mm -hmm. because you had to formulate the texture and then start formulating the colors because I'm self funded. And I, you know, I only had a certain amount of money to, to, to create my brand. Yeah. And so I wanted all the colors to look good on, on everybody, on my friends. I have friends that are all different shades. They're light skin, dark, they're everything in the middle. Like, and I, I wanted it to look good on everyone. So I 
you know, I tested it on all my friends and family. They were very nice. <laughs> and then I would give feedback back to the chemist of like, oh, I want this a little more brown or a little more pink and until it was, until it was perfect. Was, so. Is this the most difficult part of the, of your process or having your own company is the process that your products go through? Would that be one of the most difficult things? Yeah, it's, it, you know, I've really learned that I, I, I've really learned to love every bit of all the processes of even the business portion mm -hmm. that I really didn't feel I was very strong about. I didn't know how to read a spreadsheet and I didn't know how to make decisions and about that were going to affect a lot of things. I had to like really change the way I thought, you know, you don't get a handbook as a CEO, you know, you just kind of start having to you make expensive mistakes quite frequently. And so you make it one time a mistake like that. So you learn from a lot of your mistakes and, you know, you start meeting other people that are, I'm really blessed um, on that, on the aspect of being a makeup artist. I have, you know, had amazing people in my chair. I've had the CFO of Google, Condoleezza Rice, Dana Perino, Ted Cruz. I've had, you know, different uh, athletes and, and musicians. I, so it's so, I always learn a little something from everybody, you know, whether it be a makeup tip or a business tip or how to handle people, um, working with different people, you know, meeting these different people. So it's so, I love, I love that part of my job. What so is, much. what is the greatest satisfaction that you get? Is it the celebrities or is it whomever is sitting in front of you? Or is it a part of your, the process that you go through? What satisfaction do you get out of? The, the greatest amount of satisfaction you get out of your job? Well, it's always fun to meet different, interesting celebrities and people. That's always fun. But what I really love is anyone that gets in my chair that has never had a, a makeup experience. Um, I love transforming them into looking like they've never envisioned looking like the best. I, I, I typically say it's like making someone look like the best version of themselves. Mm. Um, so I really, I love being able to do that. I, I love like doing a before and after on a client and showing them. And I mean, I've had people start crying because they've never looked like that. They were so happy. So, or, or you know, someone's wedding. It's, mm -hmm. I, I, I enjoy every, all the people I meet. They don't need to be famous um, at all. I, everyone is interesting to me that I meet. What are some tips you give? I know is something that is part of your mission to help people look stylish and be more confident. What are some tips that you kind of give to some people so that they can live that way a little bit more stylish and have a little bit more pizzazz in their step? Well, I think when people are happy and feel loved, they always look better. Mm -hmm. um, so I always tell them, you know, smile, you know, think of, you know, a few things that you're grateful for and that you're happy about in your life. And, and that helps when you're going out in front of a camera. Um, I think, you know, it's important. I, like I'm a makeup artist, I'm not curing cancer. So, and I know it's, people are going to hear this and think it's a very, you know, superficial job that I have, but I know that people feel more confident when they're feeling good about themselves. And if they can have a little concealer and mascara and lip gloss on or whatever, and their hair done, and they're going to go into that meeting feeling better. And they're going to, you know, be the best version of themselves, whether it be the way they look, the way they feel or how they're doing their job. So that's what I try to do. I, I want everyone to feel good about themselves and, and, and happy. How do you stay productive, Christina? I know by being the president, CEO, you're working with celebrities, you're an entrepreneur, you have a blog, you're on TV shows, you're also a mom of four. How are you staying so productive? How I know you mentioned discipline as well, but how is it, what's getting your feet on the ground and getting going and keeping going? Well, I, I'm very disciplined um, because I just especially like during this COVID and the shut-in, I, I am super disciplined with what I eat, what I, I don't drink a lot of alcohol. I don't do drugs, obviously. I wake up at the same time every day and I go work out um, and I keep my house clean. I just, I function at a higher level when things are in order and feel good. So- Do you um, have this, sorry, Christina, 
Do you have this as a written, just for listeners, even for myself, do you have this as a written down schedule or is this just something you know you must do or these are the things I must do today? I don't need to write them down. They're just things that need to be done or are you more meticulous in, in how you go about your day? Probably both. I mean, I'm so, I mean, I do, I do all that same stuff every day. I wake up, have the vitamins, the juice, the breakfast, go work out. Like it's pretty much just ingrained in my life, my lifestyle. I know that if I get, and going back to the grieving, I know that if I get too tired, too hungry, don't work out, I'm much more sensitive and apt to cry and break down. (laughs) So I try to keep, you know, make sure I drink a lot of water and, and, and just keep things balanced. I think balance is the key to everything of happiness in life. Um, How much water are you drinking a day? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Probably like a couple of four, liters four or of those, four yeah. of those. I, I drink a lot. I drink a lot of tea. I drink green juice. Um, yeah. I think it's just, I, I've started this new thing. I'm very obsessed with this collagen diet and it's not really a diet per se. It's mm-hmm. um, I'm drinking a lot of um, bone broth um, and collagen peptides I put into my tea every day. And I am feeling so energetic and mm-hmm. like my skin looks great. I just feel like I haven't looked and felt this good in a long time. And good you do look. <laughs> well, thank you. You're so nice. Thank you. Switching a little bit to, you're welcome. The, the idea of work. Do you have a tip for whether it's a health tip, you know, taking care of yourself, but for people getting into work, you had mentioned that you were feeding the animals next door of, of your neighbor, but you also mm-hmm. changed your career a couple of times. So for people who are getting into work for the first time, maybe not certain of what their their passions and their skills are, or someone else who's realizing their passions or skills and switching careers, do you have any sort of advice for them? You know, I, I tell my children this all the time. It's just, it's super important figure out what you would do if you weren't getting paid and how, like what makes you like excited to wake up in the morning and do like, I am excited when I, you know, when things are normal and I get up and I have a photo shoot or, you know, if I'm creating a new product or, you know, I'm meeting with new clients, I think just in, in enjoying every thing that you do. And if you don't like what you're doing, do something else. You don't, you don't have to be stuck in cement doing a job you hate. I mean, anyone that's not happy with what they're doing. Okay. Well start doing something on the side. If you like flowers, maybe start a flower business or like baking. I I don't know what it is that gets someone excited, but I think that's what people need to start figuring out. Like what they, what makes them happy and, and on a, on a level that they don't mind working a ridiculous amount of hours. I put a lot of, you know, time and effort seven days a week into my business but I don't mind it because I enjoy every moment of it. And um, I think that's the most important thing is just figuring out what you love doing. You mentioned things that people love and doing it. What is something that you need as a tool in your work, maybe as a makeup artist, is most efficient to help you stay most efficient in your work? Something you can't mm-hmm. go without. Something that I can't go without. Um, hmm. Well, having the great makeup tools that I have, my makeup kit being organized. Is there a specific tool that you use that is most essential that if you don't have it, you're frantic and you can't even. Well, I, I mean, I've got like, you know, my daughters make fun of me because I call my makeup brushes there. I call them, I wrote an article once about them being like surgical tools. They're like, okay, you're a makeup artist. You're not a doctor, get over yourself. But my, my makeup brushes are very important to me. Um, And so, you know, I have those, I, I, I just, I, I think it's just important to to wake up every morning excited about what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Those really tools. The, the idea of tools, and I think every job, every type of work has a tool that people. A lot of people say their cell phone, or if they're you know a singer, it might be their their voice. But mm-hmm. I think by having your tools as your makeup the brushes themselves, it makes, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. That's that's what I'm getting at. The idea of work life choices, how are you able to turn off work? You said yours are kind of your job, maybe one day you're on one day you're off. So Mm -hmm. how is it you're able to turn it off and maybe even turn off social media or stop doing interviews and, and those sorts of things to, to give you a more of a balance? 
Well, I think, I think like be, doing the makeup, I go and do it and then I come home and I, I really try to make sure that like when I'm, I'm, I've, I've had to learn because my children have told me that it's really obnoxious that my phone is always on. So I'm yeah. really making an effort when my kids are around that I turn off my phone and that I'm being a mom and, and, and they're listening to them. Um, I, you know, I, do you find that difficult? Do you find that? No, I think it, it makes me, I, like I mentioned earlier, I think having balance is so important. Mm -hmm. And so you do need to have that time where you shut things off. And, and I'm really trying, like I have a horse that I ride. Um, so I go ride my horse and it really takes me away from being me. You know, I, if I'm on a photo shoot, I'm still being a CEO and I still have to deal with my company. Yeah. In, in so many different ways. And so sometimes I'm doing the same job at the same time. And so that gets a little stressful. Sometimes I'm, you know, if I'm on a shoot and I've got stuff going on with, with Pretty Girl, I, at the end of the day, I'm super wiped out because I feel, you know, I have to be really present on set for the photographers and the clients, but then I have to be checking the email. So sometimes it gets a little challenging, but Christina. it all works itself out. In, in the industry you're in, or, you know, just in makeup, it's not necessarily the entertainment industry, but you do well in that industry. Is there a character trait that is most essential that you find that rises above the rest that is required to be in the profession that you're in? I think that I, I, you know, because I've had all these children, it's easier. I can get along with pretty much anyone and I can deal with very difficult people and make them happy and put them in a good mood. So that's probably the, something that my agent would say that, you know, if there's some difficult situation, they're always like, Oh, put Christina in that she'll handle it. Cause nothing really shakes me. You know, I don't, it that takes must a feel lot good. Me. It must feel good to know that someone's sending people to you because they may need some help or, you know, right. some levity to the situation. Yes. So, and it's very, um, you know, when you're filming TV shows and, and you're on photo shoots, it's, it's very stressful. You know, it's the amount of glamor of my life is like two seconds of the day. So, you know, you're on your feet and you need to make sure everything's perfect. And, and, you know, the, the client is there and they want, you know, the photographer, there's a lot of pressure on you and you mm -hmm. have to make things Right. You, I, I don't want them ever to be waiting for me or having to t do unnecessary touch-ups um, post pr in production because of me. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I take it, my, take my job very seriously. Is there a goal that you have for pretty girl makeup, maybe an overarching goal or some other aspect of your work? That's a great question. I actually, right now I'm in the midst of bringing investors in and expanding my line and you know, I want it to be a billion dollar business. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm, st you know, I, I'm working on this hair care line and the skincare line and expanding my line. So I, I'm very excited about 2021 that I think that, you know, pretty girl is going to be um, expanded and, and, you know, taken to a new level of success. What products do you have now just for listeners, just to kind of get an idea? So I've gone through, I, you know, I've, I've had my, always had the lip gloss. I have lip plumper. Um, and I've gone, I've done spa products. I've done candles. Um, I, I did a hand sanitizer over COVID. Um, so that's what I have right now and bronzers and eyeliners, but right I, now, like I'm really focused on the lips, but I'm excited to do, um, skincare and hair care. Cause I think it's, um, it's fun creating new products that smell good and feel good and that are, are good for the environment and good for people's skin and hair. So I really, um, I'm enjoying that process. I, I think I heard you on an interview talking about you help some of your clients with those masks and you mentioned about getting them from Japan. They're huge here in Korea. Those, yes. you, you take out the, I don't know the what they but you put and you plast them over your yeah. your face. You're amazing. And I must admit, I've done it a few times. My dear wife is always chasing me around the house, saying, "Put this you? on, put this on, <laughs> put this on." I like, oh, but I I'm they're good. I know they're good. It just for me, I'm just like oh. I know it just feels as a man like a little weird. But you know, it's so funny. I bring those on set and I put I put them on Ted Cruz. I put them yeah. on. 
Condoleezza. I put them on a lot of people yeah. and everyone loves them. They're like, oh, this feels really good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you're, I don't know where you're getting them, but Korea has a large selection of them. So for, I have actually gotten some from Korea and they are fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, they're really great. They are good. And I'm glad to hear that your product line and that your goal, it's a great goal. You laugh, but what's wrong with being a billion dollar company? No, there's no, it's, I'm not laughing. I'm just, yeah. It's, it's yeah. Real. Not in a, in, a, <laughs> in a negative way, but like, yeah, huh, no, no, it's not. I mean, great. yeah, it's funny. It's like, no, but that's the goal. I mean, it's a great goal. You know, you need to have a goal and you know, why can't it be me? It's going to be somebody. So it might as well be me. Christina, is there anything people in, in attaining this goal that people don't understand about you that if they understood a little bit more, they'd have a greater appreciation of the work that you're trying to accomplish? I don't think people, I, I, I don't, I can't imagine people realizing how hard that I have to work. Um, you know, I, you know, it's being a mother is super important to me and my children are older, but I still am a mom um, and having balance in my life and, and, and trying to, I'm not trying to be perfect, but I do like that my house, that my kids come into the house and there's food and things are like, I, I like that my kids have that feeling. And mm -hmm. then I also love feeling that, you know, I've worked really hard creating um, a company that, you know, there's been times like after my son died and my husband died that I really didn't think, you know, that I, I didn't care about my company and I, and I brought it back to life and, it, and yeah. I, and I, I don't give up on it. I've always have like something will happen and um, it seems like, Oh my gosh, it's a sign that it's going to, you know, get to a new level and I can create more products. I, I always had it in my mind that I would love it if I could get paid to create new products and, and, you know, name new products and, and that's happening. So I think if you tell the universe what you want to have happen, it'll happen. You just need to be very clear on what it is you want to have happen. The clearer you are, the universe will help you. So that's one thing I've learned. Well, there's no, there's no doubt that you are a hard worker. And I think people, the more they listen to you, and I know you, you write, what is it, soap opera digest? I do. I've been doing right? that for a very long time. The more I they do. read about you and listen to you, they'll realize that, I mean, you're a a mother of four, right? That's that's enough in itself. I'm actually a mother of five. I count my son, uh, Bo. That yeah. Do you know what? Is. That's great. And my dear wife and I had um, um, one of our children died at birth as well, or just oh, prior. Oh, I'm so sorry. And when people say, how many children do you have? And I say three. And I, although earlier I said I have two, but I do generally say that if someone asks specifically. So yeah, yeah. sorry about that. But yes. No, 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 five, no, no, no. Yeah. Five always, children, I, mother of five. I mean, even it, you think about it, whether a spiritual level or physical, it's something that's taking residence in your mind, right? Yes. The son that's taking territory in your mind and your heart and, and that weighs down and it also gives you encouragement to keep on working. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I just always count him. In in the adversity that you had faced, maybe there's some other things you, you could touch upon, but is there any advice that you have for people? And I only have a couple more questions for you. No, the, I the, all good. The the idea of any more adversity, but also advice for people who are facing adversity in their work maybe they this year they've lost their job maybe they lost someone maybe they're sick they're down they're out and just some words of encouragement for them so that they can keep on going because even though um, work is tough we know work is still good yes so after um, my husband passed away i went to a grief camp at canyon ranch uh, in arizona with one of my best friends and there was a woman rabbi from Los Angeles there named Sherry Hirsch. And she had written a book called We Plan and God Laughs. And it was so helpful to me because, and it didn't need to be because, you know, obviously I was dealing with the passing of my husband and my son, but I think in just in life in general, life's like a bunch of, it's like a wave that you're surfing and there's going to be good days and bad days. And it's really the quality of life and how you're going to be is how you choose to handle all these situations. Um, so if you can learn to know that everything is a blessing, even though it doesn't seem like it, um, and know that everything is going to get better. And just having, if you can just know that everything's gonna be a blessing, even if we lose a job, well, that would mean you're gonna find a different job or, you know, these things happen 
but sometimes they happen not to us, but for us. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I did an interview with a woman. It was so interesting. And she said, you know, people, you talk all the time about grief, but you should actually speak more about post-traumatic growth. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was such an interesting thing because, it, you know, these difficult things that happen, have happened to me have, have pushed me to grow. In, in ways that I never expected nor would have wanted to grow. I mean, that I didn't even realize were gonna happen. I, you know, it's, it's forced me, sometimes life forces you to be a better version of yourself, even though it doesn't feel like it at the exact moment. But you just have to, I think in life, happiness is a choice. And we, I just, I'm allergic to being unhappy. I don't like it at all. So I mm -hmm. try really hard to, help others or you know if I, if i'm in a sad or an unhappy mood i will light a candle or go take a bath or go for a walk or cry i'll go outside and for a walk and cry for a little while um or go eat some ice cream i don't know it just depends <laughs> there there's just i think everyone needs to figure out what it is that makes them happy and brings them joy and 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 just start doing it and and just know that whatever happens in life the good the bad the ugly Everything's gonna, nothing is cement. There's always mm -hmm. gonna be change. So you just have to know that things are gonna change. People are gonna die. People are gonna come in, come in and out of your life and, and be grateful for the time that you do have with yeah. these people. Um, I am so grateful that I was married to Ken. He was amazing. And I'm so grateful that I had, you know, those four and a half months with my son, Bo. I mean, I wish it was 150 years, but mm -hmm. it, it's a choice to be grateful for what you have instead of what you don't have. Yeah. And it's just kind of a habit that you need, that I have learned to get into of, of really being grateful for what I have. I have four amazing children that are alive and one that's up in heaven. And I, I love, you know, seeing my children's accomplishments and their smiling faces and, and what great people they are. And that really brings me joy. Yeah. Sometimes life seems like it sucks. Oh yeah, all the time. Yes, I, I I will be the first to say that that life sucks so bad sometimes. And I, you know, and I I, I always say to my kids, I'd rather you said the f word than hate. But sometimes yeah. things are hateful. Yeah. yeah. But you know, it'll get better. Okay. It'll get better. And, it, and it's great what you're saying too, and, and getting out and doing things, and also helping other people because in that comes a new sense of joy where other people need to be lifted up as well. And I think you're doing that, Christina, in in your work and in helping people look better and feel better, and not only in makeup but also in the work that you're providing and you're providing work for other people. I think it's a, a, a true inspiration, and you'd probably humbly say, "Well, whatever it is," but you're trying. And I think I heard you saying before to someone else to try and trying is very important. Absolutely. I mean, trying, you know, to me, trying isn't a failure, yeah. not trying and being scared or, or not attempting. That's a fail. Yeah. You know, a, you know, not trying is, you know, you have to, it makes life exciting and fun and you never know something great is going to happen from that or it won't. And you make another change. I, I heard this meditation once about saying like, you know, if you, so, there's a lot of people that get stuck and sit and worry and worry and worry. I mean, I really feel that worrying is praying for bad things to happen. You know, it's, it's a waste of time because you're worrying about stuff that might happen that probably won't happen. So that's very, I, I, you know, I don't believe in worrying and you know, you make a decision if it's not the right one, make a different one and make a change. My, my dear wife, she lost her younger sister this past oh, year in a tragic accident and her grandmother as, as well of 94 and every once in a while and me too and this is not they will find time to cry and and I said honey sometimes I think and she feels guilty I'm like don't feel guilty why why guilty. does she feel You're, guilty it's new it's very fresh right I mean you know that freshness of it all and yeah said, you wonderful. have to you have to go through those things and you know it's wonderful that you feel and that you've had that kind of love in your life that you that you do feel those things you know there's, there's also the other side of it too that i think that we could some people in their misery feel good in the misery 
because it, it's a feeling it's something and then they get stuck in that rut for a while and then and that's the habit and yeah a habit right and i and these are all new feelings for me but people that are listening if you find yourself in that you know take it take a moment remember but also get up and get going and try christina how can people reach you how are they best to i mean one pretty girl makeup prettygirlmakeup.com um and we're on facebook and instagram um if you want to see my portfolio on instagram it's at Christina Flack Makeup. And then the Instagram for Pretty Girl is P R E T T Y G I R L M K U P. And on Twitter, um, Facebook, and um, Pretty Girl Makeup website, and ChristinaFlack.com if you want to see my portfolio as well. It's a great name, Pretty Girl Makeup. Thank you. Right? Thank it's you so just, much. It rolls I off the tongue. That. Christina, Aww. I have one final question for you. Yes. And that is why do you work? <gasps> oh, why do I work? It makes me happy. I, you know, I like, you know, obviously making money, but I, I, I get such satisfaction in, uh, I love being on photo shoots. I, I did a TV show in March in LA with Isaiah Washington and, and it was such a fun process of doing a TV series, which I'd never done. I love what I do. I love it. It is just brings me great joy. Christina Flack, President and CEO of Pretty Girl Makeup, entrepreneur, writer, blogger, TV personality. And, um, <laughs> wow, I'm a lot of things. <laughs> and, and you're doing them well. I thank you for your time and I appreciate the work that you do. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and I really thank you so much for everything. I'm really grateful.